What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. In today's video, we're going to be making another mosaic. And listen, I know I just made one, but ever since I made that one, that's all I wanna do is make more mosaics. It's so much fun. So in today's video, we're going to be taking this plain wooden box from Michaels and we're going to turn it into this a nice matte black box with a beautiful mosaic top. And guys, look at all that color in there. It's not just black and white. Are you proud of me or what? Look at this thing, it came out so cool. So again, you guys saw the title, you saw the thumbnail, you knew what was coming. So if my Google Mosaic sounds like something you're into, let's get started. Okay guys, so the very first thing I'm going to be doing is giving this unfinished box a fresh coat of matte black paint. Now, of course, you can wait until after to paint your box because the mosaic is a little bit messy and you'll have to do touch-ups, but I just chose to do it beforehand. So I'm finishing up painting this box, giving it a couple coats, then I'm going to be making my design. I'm going to be making my design on my G-pad, and this is a program called Sketchbook. I absolutely love it. Look into it if you guys are trying to decide between a iPad or a G-pad. All right, so I've got my stencil done and I bumped it up 137% just so it perfectly fixed the little box top that we're gonna be working from. And this is a pretty small section, so our mosaic pieces are gonna have to be pretty small themselves and we're just gonna have to be careful with this design. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to transfer this onto this box top. I don't know what's going to be the best way to do it. I don't really feel like drawing a grid and then hand drawing each piece. I feel like there's got to be an easier way to do this. What that is, I'm just not sure of yet. Okay, so I think I figured it out and I'm essentially gonna do what I would do almost with stained glass. So I'm just going to cut out my design because I've already got plenty of copies of it. I can do whatever I want with this one. I'm just going to cut around this outside edge first, trace it, then cut around the circle, trace it, cut the moon, trace it until we've got our whole design done. All right, guys, we got the hard part over with. We have transferred our design onto our box top here. And if you can see, this design is pretty small, so we're going to have to cut our mosaic tiles pretty small to fit these spaces. I might even cut some points to sit right in those spots up there, but we'll get to that in a second. As you can see, I've got four different color glasses here. Shocking, I know I'm not just doing black and white, but I figured I should switch it up this time, do a little bit of color. I'm gonna do black inside here white crescent moon, I'm gonna do yellow iridescent sun rays, and then I'm gonna do this blue gray iridescent for the background, I think that'll be perfect. So not too much color, but just enough for me to handle. Again, I'm gonna be cutting all of my own mosaic tiles. These ones are a little bit too big. I have these from our last mosaic. I'm gonna try to cut them a little bit smaller than that, but I've got bins for each color. So we're just gonna cut them up and put them in their own according bins. So as always, I've got my runners, I've got my pencil grip glass cutter and my cutting oil right here. If you guys ever have questions about what tools I'm using, I will have them linked in my description box down below. If you're curious on how to actually cut out stained glass, I have dedicated videos for every step of stained glass making on my channel. I'll have my stained glass playlist linked below too. Okay guys, so like I said, I'm just going to be cutting up all of my mosaic tiles and it is important to try to variate the shapes of your tiles as much as you can. So as you're kind of making your mosaic, you'll see that you do need more shapes than just a perfect square and this is the upside of cutting our own mosaic tiles. Not only can you cut any shape you want, but if you run into an issue where you need a specific shape tile, you can just cut it out into that specific shape. So I'm trying to cut out tons of little squares, tons of diamonds, and I'm also trying to kind of randomize the shapes as well. It just kind of helps the mosaic look a little bit more cohesive and it allows the tiles to blend together better, if that makes sense. Okay, so we are finally ready to go. We've got all of our tiles cut. And I've got all of the tools that I used last time. So again, I've got the Weldon Bond glue that I got from Amazon. I've got my little Cricut tool here. So this is like a weeding tool for your Cricut machine, but this is super handy to pick up and put the tiles on. 
And I've also got a little paintbrush. So I use this paintbrush to kind of help place the glue. So I squeeze the glue onto a section and then paint it over the whole area that I wanna cover with the tiles. And as you can see, I've already got a couple of the black tiles placed because I pre-cut those harder shapes. So if you put those together, that was one piece of glass that I cut and then I just cut it in half to make that little area for the grout to sit. That way we don't have to worry about trying to squeeze little squares into those areas and that'll just help it look a lot more. With all that being said, I think we're gonna do the same thing as before and we're gonna work away from the center out towards the outer edges. That way we don't have to worry about leaving enough room for our design, does that make sense? So, starting with the black, move all of our other tiles out of the way. Here's our little black pieces. Let's get this area covered in glue first. Okay, so that's all you gotta do. Just cover one section at a time, whatever you plan on putting the tiles in first, and then just start dropping them in place. Okay, first section done, not bad. Moving right along. I cut both the top and the bottom for this moon as well, because once again, these sections like this are gonna be way too hard to get right with square mosaic tiles, or even if they were randomized mosaic tiles, much, much better. See how sharp that looks up against those points and everything else will be mosaic. And don't worry about how that looks now. Everything will blend in together once this thing is covered in hundreds of little tiny mosaic tiles. You won't even be able to tell. I'm gonna do the same thing again, and that is just glue probably half of this moon, fill it with tiles, and then glue the next half. Moving right along. Okay, not bad, not bad. Making good progress already. And see how it looks messy right now? It doesn't look the prettiest, not only because you can see glue on the inside as well, but you can't really see the design good yet. Don't worry, it will all come together once you mosaic grout inside of it. I'm telling you, once you do the grout, it like completely transforms the piece. So don't panic yet, just get it done. Lay all your tile down, and once you put the grout in, you'll be happy, I promise. Okay, so we've got the black done, the white done. I can clean this white up now. We're completely Completely done. Now we've got to move on to the yellow, which is going to be interesting. I'm kind of nervous to see how well or how hard it's going to be to fit these yellow pieces inside this design because it's such a small area. No matter how small you cut your tiles, it's going to be tricky. Okay, guys, so once again, for these super sharp points on this design, I pre cut all of those specific shapes. So every single point on the sun ray, I pre cut. That way, again, you don't have to worry about trying to fit little tiles together into that very small design in very specific shape. Again, don't worry about what it looks like. Everything will blend together once you're done. But if you have a design that has tons of very specific sharp shapes that you know you're not going to be able to fit multiple mosaic tiles into to create, just pre-cut them like I did. It came out great. Alrighty, I'm glad I got this chunk done, but 
just as predicted, it is now 8.40 at night. I did come back and start working on this again. So tomorrow we definitely should be able to get this background done and hopefully we can get the mosaic, what is it called, the grout in. Well, hopefully we can get it done early in the morning and maybe we'll be able to put on the grout by tomorrow night. But it's looking pretty damn good so far. But it's 8.40, time to wrap it up for tonight and I'll see you guys first thing in the morning. Alrighty guys, it is now about 10.30 in the morning on Saturday and I did take a couple breaks during the day here because I had to go out to a different town to help out my sister with some wedding stuff, but this is the best part of the mosaic and that's when the most difficult or the most tricky parts of your design is completely done and now you can really just zone out, forget about everything else you got going on in your life and just focus on what's in front of you it's so relaxing so again you guys know the drill by now i'm just laying down little bits and little sections of glue at a time and then filling them in with tile it is so relaxing so much fun 10 out of 10 recommend making a mosaic if you've never tried it i think i ended up working on this for about four or five hours yeah four or five hours all together this day but not the entire day all at once Okay guys, we are officially done laying down the tiles. So it is now Saturday, 9.30 at night. I didn't work on this all day today. I probably only worked on this maybe four or five hours, but we are completely done now. This is why I work with only iridescent glass. It is so beautiful. And we don't even have the grout in yet. Once we have the grout in, it kind of solidifies the design. Everything pops and it looks super cool. All we gotta do now is let this thing dry. So we just gotta let this glue dry, then we can put the mosaic grout in and seal it. Really, really happy with how it's turning out so far. It's so beautiful. And I'm super excited because my mother-in-law picked up a table for me from a yard sale that is perfect for a mosaic. So we're gonna double the size of this, I think. We're gonna do something a little bit different, but same celestial vibe, because you guys know me. I mean, if you guys have other ideas, you wanna see me mosaic a different design, definitely leave it in the comments down below. Let me know. But for now, we're gonna let this baby rest overnight, and I will see you guys tomorrow to put the mosaic grout in place and seal it. So it is the next day, so it is Sunday, 2.45, just about in the afternoon, and I think I've given this glue plenty of time to dry, which means it is time for the most exciting part of making a mosaic and that is laying down our grout. So I've already taken off all of my jewelry because this can be a little bit of a messy project. So just a heads up if you've never done it before, things will kind of get all over the place while we're doing this. So it's really easy to do. Again, I'm going to be using Jennifer's Mosaics. This is an indoor outdoor powdered grout. Of course, I picked up the black sanded grout. You can get any color you'd like. The mixing instructions are super simple. You just kind of gotta eyeball it for the most part. So it says mixing instructions, pour grout into a mixing bowl, adding a small amount of water at a time. Mix it until it's thick and smooth. The approximate ratio is three parts grout to one part water. Wearing the disposable glove, apply the grout. Wait about 15, 20 minutes for the grout to set and then brush away the excess grout using a scrubby or a soft brush. It is very important to remove the grout from the surface of the mosaic before it is dry. Once it's dry, buff the surface and never pour grout down the drain. So super, super simple, super easy. Of course, I'll have all of these products that I used in today's video listed in my description box down below. Before we start mixing up our grout, like I said, it can be pretty messy, so I'm going to go ahead and put my mixing gloves on. If you want to wear some type of particulate mask, that is probably a good idea because dust does get flying all over the place once you start mixing this up. Don't mind the hair dye I've got on my gloves already. So here's our grout. I've got a cup of water. I've got an empty cup with a little stirring stick and I've got my one third cup little measuring cup right here because we don't have to mix too much grout at all. It's not a very big surface. I'm going to open up my grout here and I'm going to measure exactly one third cup of this grout and I'm going to pour it into my empty cup. 
And just like the direction said, it is three parts grout to one part water, just about. So I did one third cup of grout. So I'm going to eyeball just about a third of this third of a cup. And just very little bit at a time, I'm going to add it to our grout and start mixing. And we're looking for a smooth consistency, a creamy smooth consistency. All right, now that's what we're looking for. That is a smooth, creamy looking mosaic tile grout mix. Now comes the fun part. And again, this is gonna be messy. Prepare to have to repaint the sides of your project because this stuff is really going to get everywhere. So all you gotta do is take it and start smoothing it into your project. That's literally it. And once you start doing it, you'll see how easy it truly sinks into the cracks. The first time I did this, I'm like, how is this going to get into all the edges and all the crevices of these tiles? But it does, look it. See, it just sinks right in there, wicked easy. And you just wanna kind of gently push it into all the cracks and crevices of your mosaic. Obviously you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to cut your hands, but it goes in there quite easily. So we're just using our hands and we're gently pushing it into all the cracks of our mosaic. Okay, so now what I'm doing, I've made a little bit of a thicker mixture and I'm going to go around the edges and just kind of finish off the edges of our project with this little bit of a thicker grout. So again, I'm gonna take some more of this grout, make sure we've got plenty in all of our edges here. And I'm gonna take my finger and smooth it out, holding it as horizontal as I can. Alrighty guys, so now is the tricky part and that is to kind of try your best to not fuss with it and let it dry for about 15, 20 minutes. So you've gotta just keep your eye on it. So we're looking for just a surface dry of this mosaic grout. That way we can start to wipe away all of the excess grout that's on top of this tile surface. So it's kind of tricky to tell when it's ready, but basically we wanna be able to wipe away all of the grout that's on top of our tile without disturbing the grout that's important that's inside all of these cracks. So I'm gonna wait about 10, 15, 20 minutes and I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like when it's ready and I'll show you exactly how I wipe all that excess grout away. Okay guys, so we're kind of getting to the part now where it looks like it's just about dry. So what I like to do is have a roll of paper towels, a dry, pretty stiff paintbrush, and if you want more gloves, you can put them on, but I kind of like to use it without. So I'm just gonna take a dry paper towel and start wiping off all that excess grout. Okay, now, I got the most of that surface grow off. I'm going to so, so slightly dampen this last paper towel. You don't wanna soak it because you don't wanna get this grout re-wet. Like very, very lightly dampen this paper towel and finish getting that surface grout off of your tiles. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The majority of that surface grout is off. Now we've gotta let that grout completely dry. And nowhere online or on the actual directions on the bucket itself does it tell you how long it takes for the grout to completely cure. So I'm just gonna wait a few hours and then I'll come back and check it and see how it looks. You can see right here what the dry grout looks like and then that darker patch right there, it's still totally wet. So I'm gonna stop where I am right now so I don't add any more moisture into that grout. We'll let it dry, wipe a little bit more of that surface, air, um, surface grout off if there is still any left on the tile. You'll notice because it makes
makes the tiles look almost mattified. So let it dry for a couple more hours, then we'll come back, check it, and if it's completely cured, then we can seal the grout. And that's the most important part, especially if you're gonna put this outside, you have to seal the grout. If you don't seal the grout, it's just going to crumble and fall apart super quick. So we'll let this sit for a couple hours and then we'll be back and seal it. Look at how fucking cool that look. Sorry, I know you guys are always complaining about my swearing, but it's not my problem. This is an adult channel. Good morning, guys. So it is now Monday, 10 o'clock in the morning, and our grout should be completely dry. It's time for the messy part. So we have got to sand away all of this grout that I got all along the edges. And again, the reason you have to kind of do this is because you want to build up that grout edge on the side of your mosaic. You don't want any sharp pieces of glass sticking out the side. You want it to look like a nice finished edge. So I've got a sanding block here and some fine grit sandpaper. So easy peasy. The reason I use a sanding block for this is because it's a flat edge and this is going to help keep that flat edge. So I'm just going to simply sand away the edges and then we will seal our grout. Reminder, once again, we're sanding. You wanna be wearing some type of particulate mask or respirator. Alrighty guys, so I have completely sanded down all of my edges and I've wiped both the surface of the mosaic as well as the edges with a damp paper towel. So now I'm going to go back in and repaint all of the edges nice and black. Alrighty guys, so we have officially sealed our newly painted black edges and we've only got one thing left to do before we can put this box back together and it's completely finished and that is to seal the grout. Once again, I'm going to be using the feeler or F-I-L-A grout sealer. So it says it protects grout joints against stains and makes cleaning fast and easy. It can be used both indoors and outdoors. That's the most important thing if you're gonna put it outside. So it says how to use it. Spray grout proof directly onto the grout and spread it evenly with a a small brush. The surface may be used for normal foot traffic after four hours. Full cure and maximum sealer protection is achieved in eight hours. Okay, so now that I put the grout sealer completely on, I'm going to take, an, again, a very lightly damp paper towel and I'm going to lightly go over all the tiles just to get rid of that mattifying look that the grout sealer gives it. Okay, so all of our grout is sealed. I'm going to let it completely cure, completely dry. Then we will put our box back together and take a look at our final mosaic box. Alrighty guys, so that's it. That is it for today's video. I am pretty excited with how this thing came out. I absolutely love it. I cannot stop looking at it. I could turn it in the light like this all day long. I'm so excited that I stuck with the colors or I chose the colors that I did and didn't just stick to my normal black and white. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Absolutely love it. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think? And again, this made me wanna do even more mosaics and i will say i've already got another one lined up for the future so stay tuned for that but yeah that's it for today's video guys so as always thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to subscribe like this video if you did comment down below and let me know what do you want to see next and i'll see you guys next time bye